The Mice and the Weasels, a Skokie Public Library digital story production. The forest was all a flutter. It was time, once again, for the trail trials, an annual show of strength in which the woodland animals gathered to twitch their whiskers, flex their fore claws, and shake their tails, whether they be furry, fluffy, or skinny. It was, to say the least, a big deal. Every creature competed with varying levels of interest. The snail relay, for example, though passionately executed, was not a fan favorite. Nor was turbo tunneling. Regardless of the skill and commitment to the art, moles are just not known for their enthusiasm. There were crowd pleasers, however. The creative nest building challenge was always a hit, and the crowds flocked to the acorn munch. But every year, it was the weasels who stole the show. And by stole the show, I mean they actually, literally, scooped up the field mice, the squirrels, the beetles, and the birds. They purloined the prizes. They poached the players. They abducted the arenas. They ignored the trail trials handbook, those weasley weasels, and it brought them a great deal of joy. In fact, they had their own prize for the best mischief maker, the Meddler Medal, that was awarded to the weasel who caused the most upset. Their self-selected entry into the trail trials was chaos, and no one ever saw them coming until it was too late. The mouse president, Anita Seed, was not having it. This year's game was cheese sculpture, and Anita was ready to dominate. She worked too hard. She cared too much to lose the trials to a pack of foul-smelling mustelids. This was her year, and she was ready to seize it. With the trail trials fast approaching, she gathered her best and brightest. My friends, who among us is tired of being humiliated by weasels? The assembled mice squeaked in agreement. Lorenzo Longtooth, a general in the mouse army, raised his tail. Last year, they put me in a little cage and called me Mr. Scrumptious Squeakers. They tied my whiskers into a bow and made me refer to them as your majesties. It was ludicrous. Everyone knows we have no monarchs in the forest. Except the butterflies, corrected Diane Crumbs, a close advisor to the president. Quite right, said Lorenzo. You know, I've always admired their lovely wings. What fun it must be to flit about in the wind. We need a plan, Anita said. A good one. And the three got back to business. They drew blueprints and mocked up prototypes until the last in the wee hours of the morning. They finally had a plan. They trained and tested, coming at it from every angle. The plan held. It was a good one. They'll never see us coming, breathed Diane. Day one of the trials passed with the nary a weasel in sight. Candace Splatternose dug her way to Turbo Tunnel Champion. Mike Warble's nest was spectacular, only to be bested by Uni's flaps resplendent construction. On day two, Arnold Chestnut fit exactly 37 acorns in his cheeks. Tim Twinkle fit 39. Esther Chu came out on top with an unbeatable 40.5. The butterflies entered the arena. Lorenzo sat straight up in his chair. We forgot something. The three mice gathered outside the arena as the crowds cheered the snake stretch. What is it, Lorenzo? Anita whispered. We've gone over everything. It's an absolutely airtight plan. The plan is solid, he responded. But we forgot to talk about our outfits. Diane gasped. Anita reeled. To the drawing board! As the butterflies performed their synchronized flight, the mice gathered feathers, leaves, seed pods, and flower petals. They designed and drew as the cicadas sang. They modeled and preened as the sun went down and critiqued and altered as the moon came up. As the next day dawned and the forest creatures began to reassemble for the final day, each mouse had a showstopper. Perfect, each felt for outsmarting a weasel. Hours passed as they made their arguments, missing the chipmunk chew, the snail race, and the bunny bounce. Their squeaks grew louder, their gestures more boisterous as they made their case. They posed and breathed, forgetting that they were supposed to be laying low. Lorenzo Longtooth, looking oh so dapper in his fine battle suit, leaped high in the air. He was surprised when he didn't come down. Anita and Diane 
look on aghast as Peter Weasel dangled Lorenzo by his snazzy shoe. Well, if it isn't Mr. Scrumptious Squeakers, was the last thing he heard before he fainted. Anita shook her head as she scurried off to warn the others. There's always next year. The weasels have won again.